Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. Hi, I'm hoping to speak to someone about the theft that happened there recently. Are you the press? No, I'm a detective investigating a similar crime in Washington, D.C. This is Sheila Schultz, the director. What would you like to know? My name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from the Beach Hill Museum in Washington, D.C. I understand you had some rare Maya artifacts stolen recently. That's right. It's a terrible loss. And the police here have no leads. Beach Hill was robbed, too. We lost one of our prized jade carvings. I'm very sorry to hear that. I'm wondering if the robberies are connected. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about the incident at Chaco Canyon? Fire away. I heard the thief left a red handprint at the scene of the crime. Is that true? Yes. It was very gruesome. It looked like blood. But according to the police analysis, the print was made with a mercuric sulfide paste. Do you know of any symbolic meaning attached to a red hand? Don't walk. Don't go there. Talk to the hand, as my 15-year-old would say. Really, I haven't the slightest idea. What types of artifacts did the thief get away with? Only the center's most prized pieces. The case contained five pre-Columbian artifacts that were excavated right from this area. Do you have a list of the stolen pieces? I know those pieces like the back of my hand. There were three pottery pieces, a small stone figurine with a snake head, and an ornamental jade carving. I'm interested in the jade carving. What did it look like? It was highly unusual. There was a glyph on it that no one could translate. Until we hired Henrik Vanderhune, that is. His opinion was that it's Mayan in origin, and that it may have been a place name glyph for this area. As you can imagine, we regarded it as something of a regional treasure. Do you know that Henrik Vanderhune works for Beach Hill now? Yes, I know. His departure was a great loss for us. Was Henrik still working at Chaco Canyon when the theft occurred? No. It happened just a few days after he left. I remember because after the police left, the staff and I were so depressed, we went into the lounge and pigged out on the rest of Henrik's farewell cake. Was Henrik on good terms with Chaco Canyon when he left? Well, it was awfully abrupt. As soon as he heard about that monolith, boom, he was gone. For some reason, he just had to go study it. We weren't exactly happy about it, but it's not like quitting is against the law. Do you recall having some appraisal work done by an art dealer by the name of Taylor Sinclair? How could I forget? He went on and on about the impossibly rare artifacts he could get for us. I said, are you an art dealer or a smuggler? But he assured me that the provenance documents would all be in order. Still, I never did any further business with him. He just seemed... slippery. Could you send me a photo of that jade carving so I can take a look at the glyph? I'm afraid I sent our only print off to the insurance company. They said they'd return it, but who knows when our claim will be processed. I'm sorry. Thanks a million, Sheila. Feel free to call if you have any more questions. This is Joe. Hey, Joe. It's Nancy. Hey, Nancy. I've got that slogan for you. Are you ready? Of course. Nancy Drew, the ace in every case. Catchy. I'll make a real impression on my suspects with that line. How's the case going? This investigation is stalling. Any thoughts on how to get it back in gear? Better study the information in Henrik's drawer a little more closely. Talk to you later, fellas. Later, Nancy. Bye.
Hi there, Nancy. One of the pieces that was stolen from the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center was a jade carving with an unusual glyph on it. Do you remember translating it? I can't remember. You rest up. I'll be back. I'll do my best. It's locked. It's locked. Looks like I need to find someone who speaks Nahuatl.
Buenos dias. I need to know the Nahuatl word for snake. Can you help me? What do you need that word for? Oh, I need it to send a message by ham radio. It's a long story. Now, if only I could remember the word for snake. I hear you have been a great help to Henrik. I wonder if you can help me improve my memory too. Something tells me this translation is going to come with strings attached. I am almost certain that the provenance documents for the Pakal carving were falsified. I have asked Joanna to see the documents, but she evades me. If you can find that file in her office and bring it to me, I think it might help my memory of Nahuatl a lot. What makes you think they were falsified? In Mexico, it is common knowledge that the carving was stolen from Pakal's tomb when it was first excavated. But no one has been able to prove it. If I can determine that the provenance documents are a fraud, this will be the first major step toward legal repatriation of the artwork, whenever and wherever it resurfaces. Okay, Alejandro. I'll see what I can do. I feel my Nahuatl coming back to me already. Do you know what Siwapili means? Princess or lady. Now, if only I could remember the word for snake. I should get back to the museum. Yes, you should.
I don't think he'll be there at this hour. Hello, Nancy. You have a special delivery for me, I hope? Here's your file, as requested. Good work, my friend. I suppose you would like something in return? I trust your Nahuatl has become fluent again. The Nahuatl word for snake is coatl. C-O-A-T-L. Muchas gracias. Gotta go! Adios, Nancy. Any news? I'd better get going. Thanks for stopping by.
The radio tube went out. It's locked.
paquete lo más pronto posible. Cambio y fuera. Voicemail. Press zero to retreat messages. Press nine for an outside line. Nancy, it's Joanna. The police are done giving me the third degree, but now the board has suspended me. To, to make a long story short, I'm forbidden to set foot in the museum. Could you please call Franklin Rose and try to reason with him? If we don't get a move on, this exhibit is going straight down the tubes. To replay messages, press zero. Press nine for an outside line. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, you must be psychic. I was just getting ready to call you myself. Oh, really? Why? I feel I should apologize for the situation that's going on at the museum, dear. I really did think we were setting you up with a nice little internship, a breather from your casework. But instead, it looks like we've fed you to the lions. Well, in all my travels, I still haven't found a mystery-free zone, Mr. Rose. Speaking of travel, I got a postcard from your father in Ouagadougou. Apparently, Burkina Faso has become the cultural darling of West Africa. He must be having quite an adventure. Yes, the last I heard, he was going on to Kenya to try to pick up a safari. Anyway, what's on your mind, Mr. Rose? Oh, let me be frank. Joanna Riggs has been in the doghouse with the board for months. Her thirst for acclaim has led her to gamble the future and the reputation of Beach Hill time and again. Now that we've lost the Pakal carving, one of our most notable pieces, well, she's just got to be stopped. But with Henrik in the hospital and Joanna suspended, how can we possibly get this exhibit off the ground? Leave that to me. We'll postpone the opening if we have to. Look, I've got a client waiting, Nancy. What we need now is for you to take up the slack. I've spoken to the rest of the board and we've agreed that the best thing is to put you in charge. But, Mr. Rose, I don't think Joanna is responsible for the Pakal theft. She shouldn't be punished. She's not being punished, dear. In legal terms, we're suspending her in abundance of caution, so she won't do any more damage to Beach Hill's reputation or her own. We're counting on you to catch this thief red-handed. Ha <laughs> ha! Just kidding, kiddo. If you can get the Pakal back, we'll see about giving Ms. Riggs another chance. 
That seems fair, doesn't it? It's a deal, Mr. Rose. Bye, kiddo. Frank. Hey, Frank. It's Nancy. How's the road trip going? Well, Joe's driving at the moment, so I'm just jotting a few notes for my last will and testament. Very funny, Frank. So when are we gonna team up on another case, Nancy? It's been a while. It would be fun, but let me get through this one first. What's the latest, Nancy? This investigation is stalling. Any thoughts on how to get it back in gear? See if Henrix made any headway on that riddle translation. Talk to you later, fellas. Go get him, Nancy. Good luck. Hello? It's me again. Hey, Nancy. What's the latest, Nan? After the board caught wind about the police interrogating Joanna, they suspended her. But Joanna didn't take the pacal. I tried to suggest that to Franklin Rose without betraying Henrik's confidence, but he's not interested in cutting Joanna any slack. So what? She's history? Mr. Rose said that if the pacal carving is recovered, he'll reconsider. Well, that's just one more reason you've got to find that carving. Yeah, Joanna's ambitions may be a little misguided at times, but... She shouldn't have to take the fall for Henrik. Plus which, her presence at the museum may be one of the crucial ingredients to solving this case. Why would the thief keep leaving that awful red handprint at every crime scene? Talk about a creepy trademark. Oh, I'm just glad I haven't seen it. With my sensitive psyche, that type of thing is like a ten-year warranty for nightmares. Does it have any meaning in Maya culture? Not that I know of. Well, somebody ought to know. You're surrounded by experts in Maya culture, for gosh sakes. But maybe it doesn't mean anything at all. Maybe the thief just thinks it's glamorous. Sure. I mean, who really wants anonymity after all? Thieves have to have style. Something to set them apart, right? It's not just any old villain that gets a book deal these days. Detective Drew, requesting hint, please. Negative, Detective Drew. Assistants Marvin and Fane, out of commission at this time suggest calling detectives Hardy and Hardy. I'll talk to you later, ladies. Watch, Watch out for stale cookies!
Nancy, you have brought me back to my work. What have you remembered? I've been working like a fiend. Look at the board. This has something to do with the plot at the museum, Nancy. I'm sure of it. Who is this Whisperer of Silent Secrets? The Whisperer came from a distinguished line of royal scribes. I can't seem to remember her name. But I do recall that she wrote an account of Maya history that greatly angered Pakal because of the way it depicted his ascent to the throne. What did the scribe say? That Pakal had bad fashion? From the age of 12, when he came to the throne, Pakal claimed to be divinely appointed the first true authentic king of the Maya. Then, the whisperer came along and wrote that Pakal was only king because his mother pulled some strings. It was quite a blow to Pakal's image. So he put her in a stone prison? Pakal swore that the Whisperer's words would never see the light of day. He put her body, her soul, and her writings all in a tomb and locked it up tight. Does this mean that the monolith is hollow inside and, and full of bones? That's the idea. Does anyone else know about this? Good question. I'm certain that there's a dirty rat trying to get into that tomb. But this is where my memory fizzles out. If I could only figure out why I took the Pakal. Do you think there is anyone I can trust? Please don't breathe a word of this. There's too much at stake. Have you ever been part of a smuggling racket? I don't know. Henrik, I received a note from your friends in Copan. I've got the Copan fool key. I still need the Pakal, though. How's your memory? The tomb. Nancy, I hid the Pakal carving in the replica of the Pakal tomb at the bottom of the temple exhibit. Huh, now how did I think of that? And another thing, you'll need to get past that computer quiz. Sonny set it up with an impossible question. No one knows what Pakal was afraid of, but Sonny was petrified of the Coatamundi. It's an ornery bandit with a narrow snout and a long ring tail, much like a raccoon or a polecat. Can you tell me what the password is to your disk? You're asking the wrong amnesiac. You rest up. I'll be back. I'll do my best.
won't be there this late.
It's locked. The Maya were pantheistic, believing in many gods who ruled over different aspects of Maya life. Chak was the god of rain. Ishel, goddess of the moon, presided over childbirth and basket weaving. Ahau Kin represented the sun. The Maya were pantheon. I have a feeling this may be one of Sonny's tricks.
The Maya ball game was a religious activity as well as a spectator sport. Players Maya scribes recorded the official history of the kings and queens, but very little is known. The Maya used different methods to represent numbers. Here is an example of the numbers from 0 to 19, from top left to bottom right. Notice how some numbers are represented with bars and dots, and some are represented with pictures. Lady Zack Cook ruled Palenque before her son ascended the throne in 615 CE. Maya tradition required that
The Maya were pantheistic, believing in many gods who ruled over different aspects of Maya life. Chak was the god of rain. Ishel, goddess of the moon, presided over childbirth and basket weaving. Ahau Kin represented the sun.
dark in here. I need a light.